Welcome to this edition of Video Drone by DIY3DTech.com. This episode, we're going to be doing a little bit of a, just a quick unboxing here. I want to share this with you guys as I just got this in and, um, again, trying to experiment with a few things here. And so uh, I'll just share with, 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 with you what I got. I'll spit it out. Ready to sky. I guess that's a pretty interesting thing. But one of the things I've been looking at um, doing my own FPV. So yeah, I know everybody out there complaining. I still got the S500 build in in progress, but um, I just really haven't found the time. But I, I really want to try FPV or some FPV racers. Now I haven't quite settled on uh, all the dynamics of this yet, uh, but I did run across this kit. Now one of the pieces that the reason I got this is I'm thinking about maybe reutilizing the SEMA uh, brushless kit. Uh, because so one of the things I like the idea is for roughly a hundred bucks you get you get basically the flight controller a normalized flight controller uh, motors and all that kind of stuff and so I kind of got thinking you know so if I buy it cheap and I think this was like 13 bucks uh, frame and I put that on there for around a hundred bucks basically you have an FPV racer and those motors are, are more than powerful enough to power of say a 250 millimeter racer like this so I went ahead and got this I'm not sure if I'm going to do that yet or not, but one of the things I liked about this is this came with props. I think these are five inch props. And because this is one of the pieces, I'm still a little bit not, I'm still a little bit, quite a bit of novice at especially picking props for FPV racers. So I like the idea that it came with props so I could kind of figure out uh, a little bit. So obviously I've got two sets, clockwise, counterclockwise. And then I've got the, the quad package itself. Now, this is a 250 millimeter quad, so that means it's wheelbase or wingspan, whatever you want to call it, is 250 millimeters. And to kind of give you an idea, the, the Phantoms and the up ears are like a 350. So uh, a little bit smaller, but still yet, I think a pretty good size. Now, there are like 180s, 100s, and, and some quite a bit smaller, but I didn't want to go that small because of the size of the, uh, uh, the SEMA setup. Now there's quite a few parts in here, I'm surprised. All carbon fiber, and it actually looks like fairly good quality carbon fiber. I'm going to move some of these props out of the way so I can kind of show the various pieces here. So lots of pieces, lots of screws. And again, for roughly 13 bucks with the props, you could buy, I think, a version of this for like under 10 without the props. Um, it's just kind of crazy because I even thought about 3D printing or machining my own out of uh, carbon fiber but I tell you what I can't even buy the carbon fiber for this cheap so I you know I just went ahead and bought the frame I mean again look at all these parts that I would have to uh, lay out design and again these are these are feet that uh, kind of go on here like this if I can get them on here but you kind of get the idea it sort of snaps on yeah like this and so these are the axis the landing legs so I really like this this concept and I tell you what, I've got a little bit addicted to watching um, some of these FPV channels where they race around and flip. I'm highly down in guys, I'm going to get that good, but I'm going to give it a little bit of a shot. And I think it looks like a lot of fun, um, you know, and especially to create some real interesting video uh, by that. So, again, lots of different pieces here. So, I think it'd be fun to put together um, more pieces than I thought, quite frankly. So let's open up the instructions to see what this all looks like. Um, nice instructions uh, so far. Uh, and again, you can see how it, how it looks. So there's a top and bottom sandwich to um, where your arms kind of mount in for rigidity. And then it's a top bracket with a camera mount with the vibration. And uh, some nice aluminum columns. These are nice looking anodized uh, red aluminum columns. So again, this all looks pretty nice. And the price is kind of crazy, so I want to experiment around with this. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit of a, a spoiler tip here. You'll also see another one of these coming, uh, but for a brush, because this is going to be a brushless one. That, And again, I want to look at maybe using the SEMA kit for this, or a hybrid of it. Uh, but I've also ordered a smaller one, because what I'm thinking about doing is taking that uh, yeah, Isheen uh, E52TX, and gutting it, taking the flight controller out of that, adding some standardized motors to a carbon fiber frame, and kind of getting rid of that hokey sort of Mavic look like wannabe, not quite. Uh, because I like the idea of the electronics, and this is what I'm trying to do is sort out uh, sort of a simplified electronics package because I just, 
I, I can't figure out why somebody hasn't come out with, with a simple pre-programmed sort of flight module that you can come out with, plug into this, just kind of a complete kit that you just sit in and, and get away from a lot of the programming because, you know, I'm, I am comfortable with Arduino programming and all kinds of stuff like that. Um, it takes a lot of time and, and all the, I always worry about, did I get everything right or am I getting everything right? And to have sort of some something sort of pre-programmed, that's one of the things I like about the Hubson or the DJI Phantom is it's just basically ready to fly. Now you can buy some ready-to-fly versions of this, but they all kind of fit in some odd ways. And, and the pieces, I'm really looking kind of to build a little bit of a hybrid here because I went with the 250 because I'm looking at adding GPS and, and having GPS on the larger frame. Because I really looked at the Assassin 180, it has GPS, but because of the the stripped down either NAS32 or CC3D or whatever the other flight controller is, none of those are really capable, or at least that I could find, of return to home. Now, one of the things I've really come to appreciate is return to home. And... Um, you know, for the smaller brush, brushed one I'm going to build, obviously it won't have return to home. But, you know, that's okay because, I mean, that's really close quarters flying. With this 250, I'd like to do some flying out over the lake and everything. And if I lose orientation, um, I don't want to have to worry about it. I want to be able to hit a switch on the, the fly sky and just have that baby come back home to me just like the Phantom and everything else does. And to do that, I'm going to obviously need GPS to do that. And so... Um, that's why I've gone with the, the larger frame. And this is kind of some of the thinking I'm sharing with you guys. I'm also looking to get feedback from you guys down below. Um, you know, how have you guys handled this or have you handled it? Are you interested in seeing more about this and that kind of stuff? So again, I want to share the kit. I'll have the links to the kit down below if you're interested in, in doing this or doing something like this. Maybe we could do it as a project together. I don't know. Um, again, I know I still got the S500 uh, build sitting off on a shelf there. And part of it is I'm still vexing a little bit about the flight controller. I'm thinking about changing to a full NAS32 because I've now, as you've seen, got a Phantom 2. That has a NAS32. I really enjoy that. Simple to program. Use the NAS Assistant. Uh, so I'm really thinking about switching from the APM to that to finish that one up. Uh, the other thing I need to do with that, I simply haven't found time, is uh, I've designed up a whole new kind of body that goes on top of it. I'm almost done with it. Uh, but number one, I need to finish it. And number two, I need to machine it all out. And number three, I need to assemble it all. Uh, not a small task time-wise and just kind of running short of time with all these other things and flying and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so hopefully things will catch up with themselves time-wise in the near future. But I did want to share this with you guys. Hopefully you found this interesting. You saw what comes in here. And if you have any questions about this, feel free to hit me up. Again, I, I think for <laughs> for around 13, for under 15 bucks, so let's put it this way, very happy with everything. And one of the things I kind of wanted to you know, get the idea of the props and how it's specced towards the copter. Now, I know there's a lot of stuff out there, and again, I'll read some more on that. Uh, different pitches of props and all that kind of stuff, but I kind of wanted to go on the safe side and get these because if, if I use the SEMA motors, I've already got the motor, so I just need the props to go with it. And I thought, all right, this is a ch cheap, simple fix, and I know these are scale to go with these arms because obviously you don't want them colliding with the other uh, props. So, anyways, hey. Thumbs up on this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, if you would, uh, also subscribe buttons can be coming up over there. Please subscribe to the channel. A lot more of this stuff coming along. Also hit me up in the comments below. Let me know what you had for lunch. Maybe what you're thinking about for lunch. What you think about this. Where do you think I should go? And what are the other things you'd like to see? I'm having a great time uh, with this uh, uh, drone hobby and especially combining it with 3D printing and machining. So love to hear from you. Cheers.